Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try this problem on your own. Alright, so let's read this problem. Sam and Jeremy have ages that are consecutive odd integers. So let's break apart this phrase right here. Uh, we know odd numbers, of course, are numbers that are not even. In other words, they have no factor. Uh, 2 is not a factor of that number. So odd numbers, numbers like 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, right? These, I put the brackets here to indicate we're talking about a group of numbers, are odd numbers. And that's something that we're, of course, familiar with. Um, they say it's odd integers. So what's, what are integers? Integers are positive or negative whole numbers. So 0, 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 2, 3, and negative 3, and so forth. These are called integers. So already I realize if, it's, if they're odd integers, that means you could talk about positive or negative numbers here, right? We don't know what we're dealing with. Um, and then they say consecutive. Um, consecutive means in a row, one right after the other, uh, with nothing in between. Now here, these numbers, one, three, five, and seven, are also consecutive odd integers, right? They're consecutive, I'll explain that in one second, odd integers. The reason they're consecutive is because they're right after each other. I know there are infinitely many numbers between each, right? Two is between one and three, two and a half, right? Uh, all these different decimals, we can 2.05, 2.005. We can never run out of numbers in between, but, but there is nothing really odd in between that. There are no odd numbers between one and three, right? So they're consecutive. They're the two odd numbers right next to each other. One, then the next odd number is three. And there's no other odd, odd numbers between. And likewise, five is right after three and so forth. Um, here, we could also list maybe in the other direction odd and uh, negative odd integers as well. But right now, in this, as an example, I'm writing out the positive examples. So they want to know uh, if the product of the ages of these two people is 783, which equation could be used to find Jeremy's age? J, if he's the younger man. All right. So let's just say for, uh, assume for a moment, Jeremy is five years old, right? We don't know that, of course. And that's not going to make sense because <laughs> uh, if this is Jeremy, right, the next number is the other person, seven, right? The next age, the next person. And you want to think of that in terms of J because you, you want to minimize the number of variables. So we could, we could call this K or whatever, the next person, but I'm going to call it whatever Jeremy is plus two. So notice consecutive odd integers are all two apart from each other, right? So if one of the consecutive odd numbers is J and the other is J plus two, we know they're consecutive. So here, I mean, five and seven wouldn't work. Although they're consecutive, their product would be 35. So you could say, in this particular case, j times j plus 2 equals 35. If we solve this, right, the value of j is 5, and 5 times 5 plus 2, or 5 times 7 is 35, it will work. We are dealing with this situation, j, use a different color, j times j plus 2 equals 783. Okay, so here, they don't have this equation set up, so let's go further by using the distributive property. We multiply each piece by j, and j squared plus j times 2, 2j, two equals 783. And this is the equation we can use uh, to figure out what age we're actually talking about here. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further. Uh, let's ask, let's just see, well, let's keep going. Because they could ask, what is the value of this person's age? What is j, right? So to solve that, we have a quadratic here. And the first thing I would do is take 783 from both sides, right? So we have j squared plus 2j minus 783 equals 0. And here, um, I would like to complete the square or use the quadratic formula to find the value of j. Let's just use the quadratic equation for fun. So we need to know what a and b and c are. So j, a is one, the coefficient of j squared. b is two, the coefficient of j, and c is negative, 
negative 783, the constant all by itself. The quadratic formula says that x equals, or in this case, j, our variable, equals um, negative b, excuse me, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So here, that means that j equals negative 2, negative b, plus or minus the square root of 4, b squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 783 all over 2 times 1 or 2. All right, let's keep going. So then j would equal negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus, because we're multiplying a negative 4 times a negative 783, which is a positive result. So we're going to do 783, right, times 4. We can use a calculator for that or just do the math ourselves. 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 4 times 8 is 32. Plus 1 is 33. 4 times 7 is 28. Plus 3 is 31. 3,132 over 2. Okay, so j is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3,136 over 2. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, so we can definitely break this down with a calculator, um, or without, depending on which arithmetic we really want to do. Here we're dividing everything by 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So I'll write that down. j equals negative 1 plus or minus, and here to break this down, I'm going to write the square root of 3136 over the square root of 4. In other words, um, I want to divide square roots to see if I can reduce. And here, 2 is equal to the square root of 4. Those are the same thing. Let me move this down so we can fuse ourselves here. It's too close together. Oops, sorry. All right, I'm moving this down. Um, so here, instead of just trying to divide by 2, I'm going to divide by the square root of 4. Because if you're dividing two square roots, you can just treat this as 31, 36 divided by 4, and that won't actually change the result. So here, do 31, 36 divided by 4, we get 784. So this is j, excuse me, j equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 784, um, which might be a perfect square. Let's see. I'm not sure. If you write that to the half power, Half power means square root. We get 28. So it's negative 1 plus or minus, right, um, 28. Oops, excuse me. So if we look at this, that finally means our last step, j equals negative 1 plus 28. Or j could equal negative 1 minus 28. And if we do negative 1 plus 28, we get 27. Here, negative 1 minus 28. Well, that's negative 29, right? Here, negative 29, that can't be someone's age. It's a negative number. I'm going to reject it. So that means the age of, the, of this person with the letter J, I forget, I forget their name at this point, is 27. And the next age is J plus 2, 29. And just to confirm that this works, let's see if their product multiplies to what we need to multiply to, which, of course, is 783. So the product of these two ages, these two consecutive ages, is 783. Now I know in this problem they didn't ask us to go anywhere near that far. But I could see that clearly being a question that you might ask, so we should have the ability to go further. Anyway, the answer to this problem, if we go back to it, is just j, right, we had it right here, j squared plus 2j equals 783. Choice 3. Alright, hope this helped.